Is the Scream franchise becoming too meta? It's complicated, but how did we get here? It all started back in 1996, when a original film produced by Kevin Williamson titled Scream was released in theaters. Many audiences loved it, which made a really big impact between the domestic box office. This in turn spawned numerous sequels with the intent of starting its own franchise. Many people don't notice, but Scream has always been about mocking the horror genre. These are just the cliches and the average things that usually happen of how everything feels the same in typical horror movie fashion, but it does play around those rules. Some horror movies have broken the boundaries when it comes to referencing meta commentary, and there's some that have changed the rules a bit throughout the years. But at this time, there hasn't really been much changing within horror movies. It's usually just a simple formula. But because something can be formulaic, it doesn't make it good. There's just so much you can do without hurting the brand, but there's a lot you can do to damage it. A little bit too much meta commentary can kind of ruin the basis of the film, although the structure per se wasn't exactly affected too much. The meta commentary is supposed to be some kind of character, almost like it has to be implemented in the film. There's a purpose for it to be in the film, and to see this have little impact within the story doesn't exactly make me hate the film. Meta commentary can be kind of difficult to handle sometimes, especially when there's an overarching franchise. There's a lot of plot points you have to pull in together to make sure it all connects in line with everything. Throughout Scream 5 and 6, we see the impact on the mind of a particular character, in which one becomes more unhinged and disturbing as this movie's emphasized them. That character is Richie Curse, and we learn more about him in terms of meta-commentary. Although Scream 6 was a revenge story, it is also a commentary on true crime and how obsession can spread like wildfire. Nobody takes the true fans seriously. Not really. How can fandom be toxic? It's about love! You see, Richie's character is explored further with recreating something and referencing the original. As we see these actions come to play, especially with the inclusion of Sidney, Gil, and Dewey, the characters Amber and Richie are trying to make a new requel after the disastrous different movie, Stab 2021, which was a reference to original IP movies that do not feel like a sequel to the original. Rather, a different take on the iconic character. Scream 5 did showcase requel elements such as how it explored Samantha Carpenter, a new character whose unknown secret was being Billy Loomis' daughter. This revelation creates a distinction from the past movies, which once again references the fact that anything from the original is brought back to build something new towards an ongoing storyline. Let's take a look at Sydney Prescott for example. She's the lead star of the franchise and proclaimed final girl. When we notice these characteristics take form in the structure of the character, we see that she's smart, vigilant, and a badass overall. Sydney's story is told within the span of three movies. The first scream is how she learned to fight back against her mother's killer and overcome her grief and trauma. The second installment is about her coming to terms with past relations and showcasing the consequences of her actions. Finally, the third installment is about how Sydney found out more about the truth of what really happened to her mother and letting the trauma go to rest as she begins to heal in peace. Sydney's in two of the next installments but has a slight minor role as she has little emphasis to the story. The rules are reversed essentially as Sydney starts to overcome her trauma and fight back. Gail Weathers, another legacy character played by Courtney Cox, is seen in all six installments, kicking ass and taking no shit from Ghostface. Feminism is shown throughout the franchise since this is a huge part of horror franchises and movies back in the day with final girls in a patriarchy driven world run by men. Then a commentary is elaborate and supposed to lead to various character arcs and tropes. Scream takes advantage of its meta and uses it to fool the viewer. Audiences expect the attacker to eliminate the main cast, such as the slut, the best friend, the smoker, the comedy relief character, and the jock slash tough guy of the group, so that we see that these rules are reversed and changed to fit the overall structure and narrative of being this isn't a normal slasher, we question our perception and ideology of a typical horror movie, and think of the unexpected. In Scream 6, the audience's expectations are challenged as the rules can be changed or revamped into something that isn't formulaic or expected. In terms of Ghostface in all four films, the character is shown to be incredibly clumsy, while the last two installments show a relentless different take on the iconic villain. I think that this is definitely intentional, with many people questioning how Ghostface is scarier once he's on the hunt to track down the main characters. Unfortunately, the comedy on these movies have gone down a little bit slightly for a more aggressive and mean tone throughout the movies. Starting from number 4, the aggressive tone and shift in different overall structure and narrative has dramatically changed the impact that most of these characters have. Some stuff are played for laughs, while others aren't, but since the comedy is stripped away, most of the stuff are taken more seriously, which overall emphasizes a specific character arc as it has more meaning and importance. In conclusion, I don't think the Scream franchise's meta-commentary would disrupt its plot. 
Even though they will come back to make new and original ideas in the future, I don't think it's actually damaging the brand. I do think they're gonna run out of many things to talk about. Whatever makes money will continue to drive and we can't do anything about it. So I can see a sequel happening in around at least 20 or 15 years in the future.